Vicious Syndicate Data Reaper number 241 is out. I'm uncorrupt, and I'm going to take a look at it with you. Just a quick note before we get started, I'm not affiliated with Vicious Syndicate in any way. This report is all the hard work of these fine people that you'll see right here at the bottom of the report. I always like to make that clear, try to make sure that I'm not taking credit for somebody else's work. Jumping back up to the top, just one quick note here. You can see the number of games, overall games, 392,000. That number is significantly less than what we've seen from the first week of the expansion launch and uh, even, you know, a couple of weeks into it. So people definitely not playing as much as they were, which is kind of a sign that maybe the meta is getting a little bit stale and the newness of the expansion is worn off. Getting into the class frequency discussion... We can see here they say the impact of the balance changes is massive and can be most dramatically observed by the rise of Relic Demon Hunter, which has become the most popular deck in the format. One thing that I would say about that is um, this report says that uh, the data that's covered is from the first four days after the balance changes. And I think that for those first four days, that was likely true. I was seeing a lot of Relic Demon Hunter, but I don't see as much anymore. And for me, what I really see is a diverse meta. I see every class with the exception of Paladin and, of course, Warrior. Everything else at least has some kind of representation on the ladder. So definitely uh, things have changed, I think, in the last few days since they cut the data off to start analyzing it for this report. Uh, Druid's still one of the most popular classes in the game. Ramp and Aggro are in an ongoing decline, so we'll be seeing less of those over time. Ramp Druid suffered a big nerf, as we're all familiar with. My boy Guff finally got slaughtered. Eh, not totally slaughtered, but he's definitely limping around. And uh, Aggro Druid needed Ramp Druid, so Aggro Druid I think we've talked about before. Aggro Druid was really just a counter to Ramp Druid. Other than that, it's just not a good deck, so it's going to start seeing less play, and it's going to be less effective. Priest's four archetypes haven't changed. Priest, I really hope that doesn't become a very popular class because Priest is just frustrating to play against with all the thievery they've got going on and, uh, you know, some of the general hogwash that the class is capable of. Edwin Rogue hit hard by the balance changes. The deck's only noticeable at Legend. Thief Rogue seems to have awakened. Again, Thief Rogue, another hogwash deck. There's nothing really less fun in Hearthstone than seeing your opponent high roll jackpots and reconnaissance. So hopefully Thief Rogue is not going to be a mainstay in the coming format as we start to solidify things after the most recent balance changes. That's all I'll say about that. Bomb Rogue, Shark Rogue, um, they're still going to be out there, but, you know, probably not very much. And uh, Bomb Rogue, of course, also, you know, pretty frustrating with some of the high rolls that that deck is capable of. Control Shaman is back, encouraged by the nerfs to Druid and Mage, looking to establish itself once again as a top meta competitor. The thing about Control Shaman is, even when it's good, it's not very popular, so I would expect that we're not going to be seeing a lot of Shaman going forward, just because people tend to not play that class as much, and certainly not, you know, a Control deck. I think Control is probably the least popular archetype in Hearthstone. Hunter, another benefactor of the balance changes. Beast Hunter is spiked in play and makes up most of the class, with Face Hunter remaining at a low play rate. Nerfed Quest Hunter seems to be an exclusive choice at lower ranks of the ladder, so if you're lower ranked on the ladder... If you queue up into a hunter, you always got to keep in mind they could potentially be quest hunter, and the higher up you go, the more rare they're going to be. I actually have not seen a quest hunter since the balance changes were introduced. Mage has fallen harder than Druid in terms of play rate, which is actually surprising. Mage is always a popular class just because it seems like the community really just enjoys Mage as a class. Class is still popular, but becomes gradually less common as you climb the ladder. Despite this decline, it doesn't appear Big Spell Mage and Spooky Mage are going anywhere. Current play rates are stabilizing, so just a little bit less prevalent than they were. Warrior picked up a little interest, but not much traction. That's a pretty interesting way to say it. Enrage and Charge are the most noticeable archetypes, with the Galvangar finisher attempting to make a comeback. I haven't seen that, but I actually lost a game just yesterday to uh, Grom that was copied by a Faceless, uh, Faceless Manipulator, I think is the name of the card. They copied their Grom, were able to have a big burst turn. It was unfortunate. And getting right down here into the, what I consider to be the meat of the report, the power ranking discussion. And uh, you can see here it covers the first four days of the patch, as I mentioned earlier. Aggressive decks with solidified builds are performing well, while some of the archetypes that don't appear as powerful need some time to figure things out. No overreactions needed. So they're saying, take everything with a grain of salt right now. Things are going to continue to change. And decks that are good now may actually not be as good by this time next week. So just something to keep in mind there. Demon Hunter, uh, Relic is not that hot. That covers around a 50% win rate, which is, you know, not great. Top popularity is likely to lead to a significant decline in its win rate since it invites counters. Hunter, 
Uh, Bless Priest, Imp, Warlock, and Rogue all seem to take advantage of it very effectively. I would agree with that. I've been playing a significant amount of Imp, Warlock with the Curse Package, and uh, it feels like it's really, really hard for the Demon Hunter to be able to win. Um, I haven't been playing a whole lot of Rogue, but also that seems to be very good. And, uh, you know, nobody's really playing Naga slash Bless Priest. That deck's just never popular, but, uh, you know, also Hunter seemingly can beat Relic uh, Demon Hunter pretty easily. Uh, there's some questions regarding refinement, but the deck might experience a collapse in its performance if it doesn't adjust. This is no Spooky Mage or Ramp Druid. Uh, decks that manage to hold out decent win rates despite having the entire meta try to target them. Demon Hunter is easy to prey on in comparison, so I take this as being a positive thing overall. There's not going to be any deck that's really going to be dominant. Every deck is going to be targetable, so that should lead to a lot more diversity and hopefully a lot more fun to the general population, which... I consider myself to be consider myself to be a casual player, although I do play a lot for a casual. Aggro Demon Hunter performs slightly worse, but displays a clear scope for improvement that may eventually lead to it becoming the stronger Demon Hunter deck. We wouldn't expect it to be better than Tier 2, but it should be a solid option in the format. I'd like to see Aggro Demon Hunter come back. That's a pretty interesting deck. Kind of fun. Ramp Druid appears to be weakened, which was one of the goals of the balance changes, but we wouldn't write it off. There's a few things it can do to adjust to the new format and recover. The important thing is that we can't get away with taking over the format at huge play rates. It has become more situational. The Nerf to Guff succeeded at reducing its late game dominance while maintaining its competitive viability. Aggro Druid performs well throughout the ladder. It remains a good choice on the climb to Legend, but is still quite dependent on running into Ramp Druid to see success. It isn't particularly good against some of the decks we expect to rise and play over the next week. And look. I'm not really seeing Ramp Druid. I've only played a very small handful of Druids in the last several days, and I believe all of those were actually Celestial Alignment, which I guess is a form of Ramp Druid, but just not seeing a whole lot of Druid. I've actually seen significantly more Aggro Druid than I have Ramp Druid these last few days. Priest, sorry Finno, but Naga Priest looks nuts, so this is actually a call out. Uh, Finno tweeted, I think, within the last couple of days, it would be great if Vicious Syndicate would say that Priest was bad so that it wouldn't take over the meta. And so you can see uh, they saw his tweet, and they're just letting him know, sorry, but uh, Naga Priest looks pretty good here. To be fair, we're not worried about how good Naga Priest currently looks. It's clearly taking advantage of the high popularity of Ramp Druid and Relic Demon Hunter. We can't imagine it would be able to maintain this level of performance if its play rate was significantly higher. So they're just saying that you are able to target Bless Priest and uh, counter it if need be. So it's probably not going to take over the meta, which I think a lot of people will be thankful for. Quest Priest is just okay. Uh, you know, this deck has been around for a while. I think everybody's pretty familiar with it. It's pretty straightforward and the textbook definition of a linear deck. And uh, Bless Priest is more of a top legend specialty compared to Naga Priest. It's more difficult to pilot. You know, a lot of the Priest cards are, or Priest decks, people talk about how complicated they are. And when I look at it, I think, okay, you draw your entire deck and you kill them anywhere from turn 5 to turn 7. You know, that pretty much describes Boar Priest and uh, Bless slash Naga slash Boon Priest or whatever else you want to call all this stuff. Basically, Priest just has insane card draw. Whatever win condition it wants to go for, it can get to it very quickly, and your opponent is going to die very quickly. And if you whiff, then you just whiff. That's Priest in a nutshell, at least for me, outside of uh, Quest Priest, obviously. Getting into Rogue, Edwin Rogue now looks like only a reasonable deck at Legend ranks. doesn't have the kind of raw power that could carry a less proficient player to success, and it's not Tier 1 anywhere on the ladder. So again, the nerfs worked there. Thief Rogue has significantly improved its performance after the patch. It's now a real deck rather than a figment of people's imagination. It's improved its performance at higher levels. Is a mix of above average skill ceiling, the increased popularity of Demon Hunter, as well as usual poor optimization occurring at lower ranks with this archetype. This data mostly reflects the Renathal build, so 40 card decks. Bomb Rogue is another deck that performs better at higher ranks, but this is likely a case of a favorable field. It eats Relic Demon Hunter for breakfast. It doesn't excel in any other matchup, so Bomb Rogue likely not worth your time if you're interested in something like that. And the Edwin nerf seems to have hurt Shark Rogue a lot, so Shark Rogue also probably just dead. Control Shaman is back to being a very well-rounded deck with an even matchup spread. Relic Demon Hunter looking overrated is also good news for the archetype since it has been slightly struggling there. The loss of Snowfall Guardian means that matchups such as Imp, Warlock, and Beast Hunter are more difficult. Those are the problematic matchups. They are 45-55, and they can be improved with a small tweak. You want to play a deck that has a chance against anything, this is it. So Shaman actually may be looking like possibly one of the most skilled decks in the format, just from the standpoint of 
you know, you're not going to dominate any matchup, and you're going to have to fight hard to be able to win every matchup, just because every matchup is so close to 50-50. So if you're interested in that, Shaman, definitely a good pick to test your skill with. Hunter, this could be early patch Hunter tax, but we have nerfed everything to the point Beast Hunter is now the nuts, question mark. The deck looks extremely powerful throughout the ladder with an absurd matchup spread that offers almost no counter. Blessed Priest is the only reliable counter. Playing Beast Hunter over the last few days has been like playing Hearthstone in easy mode. Do note that we have yet to notice a decline in its win rate as of the writing of this report, but we'll see how things shape up next week before we reach any solid conclusion. So Beast Hunter looking really, really good right now. With Base Hunter, we clearly see it. This deck should remain powerful at lower ranks, but is expected to decline in its performance at higher ranks. It should remain inferior to Beast Hunter by some margin, even though it exhibits a very good win rate. It could remain at its low play rate due to being made redundant. If Quest Hunter wasn't nerfed, it would have been absurd as well. Its matchup spread is much worse after the nerf to its first phase, which saved us a lot of trouble. It's experiencing major issues dealing with Beast Hunter, Druid, and Shaman holding it back to Tier 3, so Quest Hunter, just not worth your time at this point. Again, I think everybody's going to be happy about that. Imp Warlock is looking good, much like the most refined, aggressive decks in the format. The early game passiveness of Relic Demon Hunter is very inviting. It doesn't perform well against some of the more successful decks in the format, so we expect things will become more difficult for it over time. Should remain in a good position, nevertheless. Mage is noticeably weaker, but far from dead. Big Spell Mage exhibits a positive win rate at every rank bracket. Spooky Mage shows some indication of improvement in its performance over time. So if it can make good adjustments to the new format and the nerfs it received, it will be in a fine spot in the meta. So, you know, Mage, not out of the picture just yet, should be coming back. And uh, no longer overwhelmingly prevalent in the class, but still very competitive. Speaking again, I believe, just about the Spooky Mage. Enraged Warrior is close. We can identify ways it can easily improve its performance against the field too. It might not be a great deck, but it should feel better for those who enjoy it. A new card from the mini set could be all it takes. Something along the lines of a Risky Skipper type of card would be all that it would take, and that deck would be really strong, I think. Although, if you've played it, even when you win with it, it does come across as somewhat boring sometimes. Charge Warrior is not an embarrassing option on the ladder, slotting into Tier 3. Its win condition is quite intimidating, and it can find it very quickly with its new build. The Atar also not that big of a problem, as it has plenty of redundancy with its combo pieces. And coming down to Paladin, the little class that can't. Paladin couldn't make it for the Power Rankings table this week, but is likely to make it next week. Here, Paladin estimated around Tier 3. The problem is that it has no scope for improvement, which means it could get left behind. We haven't seen anything new that's promising within the class. It needs more than a bigger banana. So Paladin, to me, the class just needs a rework. The class isn't good, and even if the deck was actually good and competitive, it would likely just be boring, because all it does is just make big statted minions and then sticks them on the board. That's not really compelling gameplay for anyone. Paladin, at this point, unfortunately, it may actually just need to be outsourced as far as design for the class, unfortunately, just continues to struggle. Patch after patch, expansion after expansion, you know, when is Paladin going to be made good again? That's going to do it for me. I'm Uncorrupt. Thank you for watching the report. If you're interested, there's more information available here at ViciousSyndicate.com. Thank you for watching and good luck out on the ladder.